Welcome to Mass with Bob. Today we're looking at a uh, special case of the uh, hyperbola, I guess. This is the rectangular hyperbola. Uh, you can see here, we will have a look at this in a little while, but E is equal, equal to root 2, the eccentricity uh, for rectangular hyperbolas. Obviously the rectangular side of it means that the um, asymptotes are perpendicular. So this is really like a, a special case, if you like, um, of the hyperbola. Um, and uh, today we're just going to have a look at, um, let me show you, there's actually a relationship here, I'll just try and see if I can get this to work, uh, between uh, the A and the C, um, when I actually rotate the uh, uh, x squared minus y squared equals A squared uh, by 45 degrees, uh, you'll see that in fact we get xy is equal to C squared, and um, this is actually, uh, where is it here, xy equals C squared, so if we actually rotate this one, 45 degrees we get this one and there's a relationship between um, a and c you can see here that uh, what's that uh, well c squared equals uh, a squared on two or if you like uh, half a squared sometimes a squared is equal to two c squared you can look at it like that but we'll have a look at that now okay so let's just go into geogebra here we are now um you'll see oh you may not be able to see uh, but uh, the um there's a um x squared minus y squared equals 8 was that purple hyperbola and we are going to uh, rotate that 45 degrees and I'll just show you it'll actually turn into x y uh, is equal to 4 so uh, let's actually just rotate uh, okay so let's uh, oops other way let's actually just rotate okay x squared minus y squared equals 8 uh, here we are okay let's rotate it okay all right so we rotated x squared minus y squared equals 8 it's actually now turned into the um, rectangular hyperbola xy is equal to 4 okay so this is uh, the rotated version of the uh, okay let's rotate it back uh, okay here we are. Uh, yeah x squared minus y squared equals 8 oops not quite rotated back okay 45 yes 45 degrees okay there we are okay so um when you actually rotate okay uh, x squared minus y squared uh, equals well, in this case, it was x squared minus y squared equals 8. And we rotated it, and we uh, got x squared, well, sorry, we got x, y equals 4. Okay, so now you can go through and uh, have a look at the previous uh, video, which is quite similar in uh, terms of the hyperbola, and you can actually get the equations for the, um, you know, the foci and the directrices, okay, just by the internal and external uh, ratio or division formula. Uh, and, but we already know that you know the foci are at plus or minus a e zero, and uh, the directrices are x equals uh, plus or minus a on e. Okay. Now, uh, if you want to go through and have a quick look, you can see here. Um, if you go through and square just the normal p s equals e p m, uh, and you'll be able to derive that uh, the eccentricity e is the uh, well since a is uh, you can see here. A is equal to B, then we get this expression here. Okay, um, and uh, basically this will give us eventually that uh, E will be actually equal to root 2 here, because basically A squared is equal to B squared. Okay, you can actually also do this. Okay, let's try and close that window. <laughs> okay, there we go. Okay, so you can actually derive that the uh, eccentricity is uh, root 2 for these rectangular hyperbolas. That's okay. Now, a couple of examples I just went through quickly. Uh, you can see here, we, we obviously uh, get the eccentricity as root 2 as expected because I set these up as uh, rectangular hyperbolas. Okay, I'm uh, just going through the foci. You can see here at um, the first one is... Uh, uh, x squared minus y squared equals 9, or if you like, x squared on 9 squared equals, or minus y squared on 9 squared equals 1. Okay, so you can rewrite that any either way, basically. Uh, and uh, you'll get the foci at plus or minus 9 root 2, 0, and directrices are, in fact, uh, if you like, x equals plus or minus 9 over root 2, which we can rationalize the denominator for. Okay, so we can... Obviously, uh, you can ex well, we expect the eccentricity to be root 2 for rectangular hyperbolas. Uh, now, we go through a little bit of uh, differentiation now to try and work out uh, what the gradient would be. Okay, you can see here, it's, um, 
that's actually, let's try, there we go. There it is, dy dx is actually equal to uh, x on y. Okay, this is for, um, just uh, while we're here, because it's actually directly reciprocal for x, y equals c squared, but if you have a look here, this is for x squared minus y squared equals a squared, that in fact dy dx is equal to uh, x on y. And that obviously gives us uh, what call, what's called the gradient for the Cartesian gradient, uh, and the normal, obviously, negative reciprocal, and the parametric ones as well. You can see parametric. I, I actually re I simplified it to one on sine theta, but normally we'll just use sec theta on tan theta for dy dx, okay, or minus tan theta on sec theta, not the minus sine theta, but you can simplify these, you can see here. Okay, so obviously that's just based on dy dx equals minus x on y, and we just sub in the uh, Cartesian and the parametric points. You can actually derive the gradient using the parametric form of the derivative. You know, uh, dy dx could be written, written as dy d theta over dx d theta. I mean, you can do it that way as well. Okay, so we now have the, uh, okay, this is now the Cartesian tangents and normals equations. Okay, uh, for x squared minus y squared equals a squared. And you can see here, here they are. These are the ones which we're really concern with these ones, this one here, x, uh, x1 minus y11, uh, minus y, y1 equals a squared, right, and uh, that's a strange looking one down here, uh, look at the, for the normal, x over x1 e plus y over y1 equals 2. Okay, this is the uh, Cartesian normals equation for that, uh, okay, pre, if you like, pre-rotated <laughs> rectangular hyperbola x squared minus y squared equals a squared. Okay, all right, so let's actually go to the next page. Here we are. Um, these are now the uh, parametric equations, as you can see here. Uh, I'll just uh, circle them. Here we are. The parametric, uh, this is the parametric tangent, x sec theta minus y tan theta equals a. And if you go down a bit, a bit have a bit of a quick look, this is the parametric normals equation. Now, obviously we're just using y minus y1 equals mx minus x1, the equation of a line with a gradient and a draw point. Uh, so we just basically have to simplify them sometimes. Uh, with, uh, but basically the equations are similar to the ones earlier for the normal hyperbola. Uh, now, I've now, this uh, you can see here sometimes there'll be a, an orange rectangular comes up, but this is actually trying to indicate that we've now rotated the, uh, the rectangular hyperbola to another rectangular hyperbola by 45 degrees, and now we now are looking at x, y equals c squared. And if you have a look, something quite interesting, okay, uh, over here, oops, we didn't quite get around there, ah, there we are. Okay, so if you uh, use implicit differentiation on x, y equals c squared, you in fact get, um, if you have a quick look here, dy dx is equal to minus y on x. Um, and now you just have to be a little bit careful because, you know, when you're plotting the, uh, well, obviously the uh, Cartesian gradient is minus y1 on x1, and that will give us the equations for, you can see here, equation tangents. These are, now these are, now, let's be a little bit careful. These are now for the xy equals c squared. Uh, okay, this is the xy1 plus yx1 equals 2c squared, that's the tangent, okay, this is the Cartesian tangent, okay, and you can see here down here the, the Cartesian normals equation, uh, basically uh, using the negative reciprocal gradient and subbing it into y minus y1 equals mx minus x1, and you just rearrange and try and simplify where possible. Okay, so these are, if you like, the uh, Cartesian equations, if you like, for the rectangular hyperbola x, y equals c squared, right? Now, the parametric ones, okay, well, first of all, what is the parametric point on uh, x, y equals c squared? You can just see here, it's quite simple. It's c, t over, oh, sorry, c, t is the x, and the y is c over t. If you multiply those together, you'll obviously get the t's will cancel, and you just get x, y equals c squared. And um, again, we just uh, put in the parametric point, uh, and we get a, Let's have a look. Um, what do we get for the gradient? Um, is that minus? Let's, see. Let's go have a quick look over here. Here it is. Okay, it's uh, 
minus 1 over t squared as the parametric gradient uh, and uh, that's uh, going to be just used to sub into for the uh, tangent straight off and then the reciprocal uh, for the normal so it's uh, here we have the okay the parametric tangents equation x plus t squared y equals 2 ct and just dropping down a little bit you can see here this is the uh, um, uh, if you like the uh, normals equation okay tx minus y over t equals c brackets uh, t squared 1 minus t squared close brackets okay so you can see here they're getting uh, okay a little bit more complicated I guess in some cases now the quarter contact okay is uh, done similarly uh, to previous cords of contact uh, if you look, watch the other videos but basically uh, as you know it just goes along the lines that uh, basically uh, A and B are these points uh, x1 y1 and x2 y2 and they lie in the tangents equations uh, and uh, this P uh, x0 y0 lies on both therefore the equation of the quarter contact uh, it should be something like this okay basically following along the uh, tangents idea okay x y0 plus y x0 equals t squared oh, sorry uh, equals 2 c squared okay this is uh, obviously um, the equation of the quarter contact from an external point okay as you see there's a little bit of a picture there uh, it's a bit hard to see but uh, um, this is a quarter contact in here but uh, that red line is a quarter contact there okay all right now uh, you can see here now we get the well if you like the chords these are the Cartesian chords and the parametric chords I just thought I'd go through these you can have a quick look here you do get a bit of a messy gradient uh, here's the it's a little bit of messy uh, okay we're still on the pen uh, we get messy uh, okay here minus c squared on x1 x2 as the Cartesian uh, chords gradient okay then you obviously need to plug it into the y minus y1 equals mx minus x1 uh, then you'll get an equation and I'll just go over here here's a gradient for the parametric gradient uh, okay uh, minus 1 on pq and that's going to give us these uh, two equations okay uh, this one here which is you can see here the uh, this is going to be the chord if you like the Cartesian chords uh, equation and the parametric chords equation is this one down here okay x plus y pq equals c p plus q okay so they are the two chords equations parametric and Cartesian and finally uh, we're just going to uh, round up with a couple of the properties now the first one is the uh, little triangle one about the area bounded by the tangent and the intercepts okay is constant that is uh, you just draw a tangent uh, to uh, a particular point on the hi a rectangular hyperbola x y equals c squared and you'll get uh, that uh, you know, the little triangle has a constant area and uh, there's a couple of ones other ones about the length uh, okay uh, the length of the asymptotes okay that is the length if you like think of it like the hypotenuse of that triangle uh, okay is uh, you can see here it's twice the distance from that point to the uh, the origin if it was x y equals c squared or the point of the size as sometimes they say the point of intersection of the asymptotes to be more general and also a little bit at the last one about the product of the focal distances uh, from P to both focuses okay the product of those two distances uh, is equal to the square of the distance uh, of P to the origin or P to the actual intersection if you like of the asymptotes okay well that's uh, all for the time being and thank you for watching and bye for now